Harry's Wife, part 92.55, Boozy Still Baiting. You are aware from parts passim that the Bot Sentinel report was utilised in assertion of control through the extension of Harry's wife with regard to seeking to nullify supposed threats to control posed by certain YouTubers. And I've demonstrated in parts passim that the content of this report really does not stand up to scrutiny, lacking definition of what hate speech is, lacking transparency as its methodology, funding, and there are repeated holes that can be poked in it, as I did. Of course, as I also explained in the coordinated defence part, the report did do its job because numerous news outlets picked it up and just ran with it, regurgitating material without subjecting it to any forensic examination or scrutiny whatsoever, although it then came to pass that numerous article hosters pulled reference to the report, no doubt suddenly realising as a sub-editor came and cracked the head of the relevant junior journalist, what the fuck were you doing printing that without actually reading it properly and subjecting it to some scrutiny? Nevertheless, certain publications have continued, Daily Express being one, to talk about the supposed coordinated hate campaign that exists. And Newsweek, which of course, through Jack Royston, finds itself as a willing outlet for Mr Boozy and his reports and observations, carries a further report, whereby Mr Boozy continues his baiting of those on YouTube. The article reads, Harry's wife and Prince Harry urged to follow Cardi B and sue YouTubers. Harry's wife and Prince Harry have to start making an example of hostile YouTube accounts following the path of Cardi B, Newsweek has been told. The Grammy Award-winning rapper sued YouTuber Tasha Kay for libel, invasion of privacy, and intentional infliction of emotional distress, and won a 2.5 million payout. Now, I have to confess, I have no idea who Tasha Kay is and whether she's got the wherewithal to pay out the monies that have been awarded against her. Nevertheless, the article explains, however, Cardi B isn't the only famous name to face an onslaught of negative commentary via the video sharing platform, where content creators can monetize their channels through ad revenue. Yes, that's the way that YouTube generally works. Christopher Boozy investigated the big money industry behind Auntie Harry's wife accounts. Well, it claims that it's big money industry, but when you break it down between the accounts themselves, it's not huge amounts of money. Certainly not compared to the number of channels that make money from other matters, such as talking about Minecraft or the latest games or reviewing toys or carrying out pranks and spoofs or the news channels that are utilised in that regard. And, of course, no context is placed but just to describe it as a big money industry. To say, look at this, these people are capitalising on making videos. How dare they? How dare they earn any money from it? Well, the point remains, of course, that criticism of somebody doesn't amount to hate. Criticism of an individual is something that can be undertaken and can be done in a way which is not offensive. And many of the accounts, not all, but many of the accounts that comment upon Harry's wife do so solely on her own behaviours. For instance, I explain her behaviour through the lens of narcissism based upon reportage and video footage. What is reported about her, I dissect. And I explain to people, I leave it up to you to determine whether you believe the article itself, but if accurate... This is what he's explaining about her. Many other channels, for instance, dissect her body language or the way that she says things or generally comment about the interactions and do so in a questioning manner. They're not ad hominem. Yes, there are channels that do carry rather spurious accusations and do delve into the realms of conspiracy theories and in such circumstances one has to question the veracity and point of such channels. But 
to say that there is this big money of the industry behind criticism without actually explaining that many of the criticisms are warranted and are justified and based on evidence shows once again the paucity of the reportage about this particular report. Newsweek continues by explaining his company Bot Sentinel estimated that YouTubers have made around 3.5 million from producing critical videos about the Duchess of Sussex. Interestingly, note the rowing back from using hate speech. Now it's critical videos. Critical videos, of course, can be entirely accurate, and therefore suggesting that there should be some kind of suing on the basis of libel isn't going to get very far if they're accurate, fair comment, and rely upon the truth. Boozy told Newsweek's The Raw Report podcast, there's a few things that need to happen, and I was completely against this if you'd asked me three months ago. I do believe that individuals need to start suing. I do believe that Harry's wife and Harry they need to start suing. The reason I believe that is they have to start making an example of these accounts. If you sue a handful of people, then other people may start to say, I can actually be financially ruined if I continue to do this. Now, of course, with Mr. Boozy offering those views, it'd be interesting to know whether he still thinks in a similar vein as a consequence of he being on the receiving end of a claim that was launched, as I understand, last week. That I am led to believe that a gentleman by the name of Jason Goodman has embarked upon litigation. And he's made reference to it in a couple of YouTube videos. And I'm pleased to explain to you all valued viewers, that I'll be speaking to Mr. Goodman next week, learning more about the case that he's brought against Christopher Boozy, why he's brought it, what he hopes to achieve, and of course, what response there has been to it. And of course, I'll explain all of this fitting into the narcissistic dynamic and prism, as always. So it'll be interesting to see what comes out of that. And of course, as a consequence, that we might then Ask Mr. Boozy, the fact that you're being sued, is this going to cause you, Mr. Boozy, to think to yourself, hmm, I could actually be financially ruined if I continue to file reports uh, intimidating and bullying people, releasing their public details on the internet, picking on certain individuals that all fit to a particular agenda of being white and middle-aged so I can run a racist narrative. Do you now think that because you're on the receiving end of a lawsuit that you might be financially ruined if you continue to behave in that way? Of course it's easy for him to encourage Harry's wife to bring about litigation and I've explained to you elsewhere that narcissists often do so for the purpose of assertion of control. One of the problems that Harry's wife has is that of course in the context of such litigation there would be the necessity of disclosure. And therefore, it would be necessary for her to provide certain evidence to counter the allegations and support her case. And in those instances, that might be evidence that she's neither got nor that she wants to be aired. Now, of course, as a mid-range narcissist, she may not necessarily be thinking ahead as to what will happen. We've seen that, of course, with the litigation that was brought against Associated Newspapers Limited, where, although she won, it led to damaging disclosures with reference to her forgetting certain emails and forgetting that she did collaborate with the improbably named Omi Scobie and the now in hiding Carolyn Durant on funding freedom, finding dollars. I mean, finding freedom. Again, if she were motivated as an ignition of fury to start the litigation, there is a risk that down the line it would backfire because of damaging disclosures. Also as well, would it be viewed as a very popular view, going after the small fry? It's one thing to take on a newspaper and all its resources, and of course its international reach, but how does that run in the popularity stakes for somebody that regards themselves as the defender of the oppressed, the individual that looks after the small person by going after, for instance, a middle-aged lady who lives on her own and has some health difficulties, or going after a single mother. 
individuals who are what would we, some people would call as citizen journalists. How does that look in terms of impacting on the facade? And remember, the narcissism may well cause her to rein back from taking such action because it would offend that facade that is operated. It's one thing to say, look at the big bad press, boo, hiss, nasty, evil newspaper magnets, ooh, boo, hiss, Murdoch Empire, Lord Rothmere, all the rest of them. They just ruin people's lives, they're intrusive, they fly drones over your property and take snaps of your children playing in the garden. We all hate the press, don't we? And therefore, there'd be a lot of people that would necessarily support such activity and the facade would remain in place but when it comes to picking on small fry small beer people who couldn't necessarily afford the legal fees to deal with such cases then that would be viewed in a bad light and that would damage the facade furthermore there is also the risk of the streisand effect that you draw more attention to the allegations than you did if you just ignored them in the first place and we saw that with all the brouhaha that arose as a consequence of the third report provided by bot sentinel it resulted in those named in the report and the corresponding list of apparently 25 problematic accounts all receiving a boost to their subscribers your glorious narrator included Harry's wife's narcissism may not have regard to any future collateral consequences, I've repeatedly explained, but facade management may cause her to hesitate and indeed not go around suing people, as has been encouraged by Mr. Boozy. Furthermore, lawyers may well, in the instant, curtail any enthusiasm to do so explaining it doesn't look good, these people may not be able to pay out. Yes, it makes an example of them, but it could swing public favour, public opinion against you all the more, and warn against the risk of damaging disclosures. And it's usually the case that most prominent and high-profile people, as I've explained elsewhere, where they're narcissists, assert control by turning the other cheek and deciding, I'm not going to lower myself to deal with this little beetle of an inconvenience. In fact, it makes me look stupid that I appear to be affected by the rantings and ravings of somebody in their bedroom creating a YouTube channel or creating a blog. Instead, the better course of action amongst the famous, the infamous, the well-known and the powerful is it goes with the territory. This is what happens. They can't really cause me any major difficulties. I will ignore them. And therefore, there is the assertion of control by staying in a position of withdrawal. Whereas taking them head-on may well, of course, nullify the threat to control by squashing the individual through litigation, but then pops up the collateral consequences. Damaging evidential disclosures, facade management damage, and the fact that you spend a lot of money, which is a resource that the narcissist, of course, particularly amongst the somatic and elite, loves, being wasted on somebody who is basically a man or woman of straw. And therefore, it's all very well, Mr. Boozy, who is no stranger to being sued and avoiding his own liabilities, to encourage somebody else to go down that route. But it is beset with hazards for Harry's wife, as I've just explained. And either her narcissism will prevent her from doing so by virtue of facade management, or lawyers will advise against it and she'll pay heed to the legal advice that she receives. She's litigious. But notice the targets that she's picked so far. They tend to be the big beasts rather than the little people. The article continues by explaining Cardi B took on Tasha Kay, accusing her of making false and defamatory statements. The star's lawyers argued the statements were malicious and part of a campaign against her. A jury sided with Cardi B and awarded $1 million in general damages, $1.5 million in punitive damages and a further $1.3 million in legal costs. Eric Schiffer told Newsweek, the jury's decision is likely spinning the wheels of interest inside Harry's wife's head. Given her orientation in using the courts to manage her reputation, we could see the potential of a similar type of action downstream, as Cardi B has prevailed upon. I think the impact will be significant legal bills this month in trying to get clarity about what is a safe harbour and what is not, as well as many YouTubers calling their insurance carriers to determine the full scope of their coverage. I think this week will be a good week for defamation lawyers and those who sell insurance for the protection of YouTubers. Tasha Kay told her almost 1 million YouTube subscribers, These last four years fighting this conspiracy case have been extremely challenging, and yet I wouldn't change a single thing about any of it. I've learned so much. Every moment was incredibly powerful and insightful. The verdict handed down on Monday was no shock to myself, my husband, or my legal team.
We are prepared, and we are prepared for this challenge from the beginning. Prepared for the worst, as we said. We call bluff against a machine that wanted to bully me for not wavering from my personal beliefs. I haven't followed the case. I haven't scrutinised the case between Cardi B and Tasha Kay to comment on the relative merits of it, whether it's an accurate outcome, whether the accusations were such that she ought to have taken action against them. But instead, what's also interesting, of course, is that if Mr. Boozy is encouraging Harry's wife to sue these accounts, shouldn't he be warning the members of the Sussex squad with whom he's aligned Watch out. There'll be plenty of people looking to sue you for your hate veiled lacking of evidence and vitriolic spouting against ordinary members of the public and other members of the royal family. The problem is, I see, that whilst there is an encouragement for her to assert control by going to litigation, the difficulties, as she'll be advised by lawyers, of being exposed to evidential inconsistencies having to prove certain things that she'd rather not do, and having to deal with certain allegations which are better just ignored rather than placed upon a televised trial, is such that she would be dissuaded by her lawyers from going down this route. Of course, what also has to be borne in mind that many of the YouTube accounts are simply reporting on her own behaviours, the inconsistencies, the omissions in information, and as a consequence... In such circumstances, success is not guaranteed. Yes, of course, there are certain accounts where some of the allegations are absolutely outrageous and scurrilous. But even then, is their reach so extensive? Is it such that the individual concern really thinks people take those allegations seriously? As I explained in an earlier video, for the best part, the famous person should sit there and think to themselves, I'm famous, I've got a lot of money, this person's just envious, I'll ignore them. Going after the little people, so to speak, is not a good look. And it may well be the consequence that the facade management that is so important to the mid-range narcissist actually governs her behaviour to deselect the assertion of control through litigation and instead shunts her to the withdrawal. As she does with her own father, by staying away from him, it may well be the case that the necessity of managing that facade, which is hugely important for mid-range narcissists, is such that pursuing YouTubers isn't on the agenda because it won't look good. And, as you know, although she has to nullify the threat to control posed by those YouTubers, that doesn't mean that she has to do so directly through litigation. She can do so indirectly, complaining about it, as, as is the case in various publications, so that she engenders a degree of sympathy from her supporters. Similarly, she can just ignore the relevant individuals and assert control that way. And I see it that it's likely that her narcissism will go down that route because it wants to preserve that all-important facade. The bigger fish will be attacked, the ones where there's been gross invasions of privacy, as we've seen previously with regard to the taking of photographs, which go after the newspapers because they've got a larger reach and they've got deeper pockets with regard to damages. But the facade management is likely to steer away from picking on individual YouTubers. Where will this leave Mr. Boozy? Well, he's got litigation to deal with himself, but he continues to bait by talking about ongoing litigation and trying to remain relevant in order to ensure that he is continued to be talked about. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.